From Hollywood, California, welcome to Razor Rifts with your host, Keith Razor. Hey, man. Hey, Michael Madsen. How are you? I'm pretty good, pal. Thanks for, uh, thanks for thinking of me. Of course. Uh, I'm, uh, Give me one second. Uh, you want to call the front desk and tell them to call you when the room is ready okay. instead of me because I won't be able to answer. All right. I'm going to go have a little trick, too. No, do it, man. Thank you, Johnny. No problem. I got to drive back. So, all right. No worries. No worries. It's good to... No, it's all good. It's good to finally connect with you. Thank you so much for taking time to, to talk with me for a little while. Well, I like podcasts, man. They're very uh, spontaneous and really kind of fun. I was uh, I was listening to your podcast, and uh, I think it's really good. I mean, you got Tom Arnold on it. Tom's a good buddy of mine. Uh, Billy Baldwin I was listening to. I mean, you know, it's one of those things you got to keep going. You should try doing it again. I, I didn't know that they were actually out there. Yeah. Fucking, I didn't know that. You know, the last couple of ones I did, uh, the, it's on camera. I got uh, um, Michael T. Williamson, and I did uh, I did Slim Jim Phantom from Stray Cats. Oh, my and God. That was, actually, that was actually filmed, but how come it's not visually? Uh, how come you can't see it visually, those ones? Well, I mean, it just depends if you release the... See, I don't like to release the video because I think I'm an ugly dude. So I don't like people knowing what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I, I don't think you are at all, man. Oh, I well, thank you. You're very <laughs> sweet. You again. Down water. It is me again. Hi. Too, with your good smile. Oh, hi. Yeah. I'm good, darling. Good. I'm, good. <laughs> I'm up on the roof uh, in a restaurant on the roof. Oh, nice, nice. Um, so wait a minute. So I do it with this company called Straw, Straw Hat, I think, or Straw, something or other. Uh -huh. But last time I did a couple of them in the studio, and they filmed them. So how come they're not available to watch them? Oh no, we we got to email them and say, hey, release the video. Why don't you ask him, man? Say, you know, I just <laughs> was with Michael, and I want to know why the fuck. He can't see the goddamn things. It makes no sense, man. We'll, we'll get Johnny to ask him. He's your assistant. I'm. I'm no, just... but I just no. <laughs> I just hired Johnny. I just got him though. I'm just starting this movie. Uh, I don't even really know Johnny. Oh, okay. No, he just started with me on this picture. I'm about to do a picture, and I have a an assistant in my contract. Yeah. And I met John. I met Johnny on. I just finished a picture called Mr. Wonderful. And Johnny was um, a second AD on the picture. And I thought he was such a, a smart guy and nice young man that uh, I took him as my assistant on this new picture. Oh, that's there, awesome. But, I, and, but then I found out, you know, he's a stand-up comedian like you. <laughs> so how, how ironic is that? Yeah, because well, I used to do assistant work too, and we don't tell our bosses we're stand-ups until after we get the job. <laughs> that's what happened. That's exactly what fucking happened, man. Wow. <laughs> it's a little trick thought, we do. <laughs> I thought he was like a cool crew guy, and I realized he's like a struggling comedian. I'm like, oh, no, Johnny, I, I can't help you, man. Uh, you know? <laughs> well, I, I can help Johnny. I'll have him open up for me. So Yeah, you know. no, listen, if this leads to, to work for him, I would feel really good about it. Yeah, I'll get him a couple gigs. He's but, funny, man. He's a funny fucker. Yeah. But hey, so I watched The Getaway because you asked me oh, to. Oh, there you go. And right. uh, it right. was great. It was fantastic. So now you know why I love Jennifer. Yeah, but I, 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 I thought you worked with her on a different movie because I saw a different movie like a year ago with you and her where you were trying to kill her. That was horrible. <laughs> that was with Gary Busey. Yeah. That was a horrible, horrible movie called Man with a Gun. I liked it. I mean, yeah, I, I You must be the only one in the universe that liked it, man, because that thing's terrible. Uh, she plays twin sisters in that, and I couldn't figure out which one I liked better. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, oh, my I, God. I wanted to ask you about the get the getaway in the, yeah. scene, in the scene where you killed... Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and you pushed yeah. him, and you pushed yeah. pushed him out of the car. Like yeah. that, that must have been a crazy stunt. Did you do your own stunt on that? Well, yeah, I've I've, I've done all my own stuff from 
for many years, and I I regret it because I'm you know I'm really busted up, and I you know I'm I I I, I hurt myself a lot. Yeah. Doing a lot of things I never should have did on horses and motorcycles and, you know, just different stuff that I, I wanted to do because at the time I was big and strong and it was exciting and, you know, I didn't think twice about it. But, um, but Philip went down the hill. That wasn't me. Oh, uh, no, I know. But when you kicked him out, like, oh, no, that was easy. <laughs> No, that was the easy part. <laughs> I was like, holy. Because you, know, you, were, I, you were wearing these jeans where I didn't know if you had a lot of leg room to kick. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, we were in a car in a process trailer. So it's easy to fake that stuff, you know. You're rolling, but you're not actually driving. You're on the yeah. back of a truck in a trailer. And so when you're steering, you don't really have to steer. And then all I had to do was just lean past him and pop the door open, and then I could just kick him out, you know? Yeah. Oh but my little God. did I know he was going to win an Academy Award <laughs> for playing Truman Capote a couple of years later. <laughs> well, well yeah. you've, wor you've worked with a lot of people who who've won awards like that, you know what I mean? So maybe they learned something from you, you know what I mean? Well, you know, he was kind of a jerk when we did the getaway. I, I don't know why he was, but yeah. I mean, I, don't, I didn't hold it against him, but but uh, I think he was just really super. He was very young when we did that. I don't know. I don't remember what year it was. It was ninety four. Yeah, it was one of the first things he got, and he was just really, really, really gun shy. He was very, very insecure, and and I took advantage of it because you know he was playing that goofy character who messed up the robbery, and so I had to sort of have a little distance from him, you know. Yeah. But, um, he, uh, I just remember he, nobody liked him and he was really nasty to people. Yeah. But, <laughs> but now he's gone. I, I shouldn't say that about him because no, no, he, it's fine because he's gone, right? He, no, I mean, listen, he, he went and did some wonderful things, and <laughs> I guess he had some troubles and you know some things that, that in his life. And God bless him, and I hope he he rests in peace. And I, 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 I don't mean to uh, say anything negative about him. No, no. It was, uh, it was, it's just funny, though, over time when you look back on some of these things, it's kind of amazing the people that you come across. You know? Yeah. And then I wanted to move to one of my favorite movies, Almost Blue, where you played the saxophone. And That's another piece of crap. <laughs> I guess I just like piece of crap movies. I no, don't listen, know. Man. no, listen, buddy. Honestly, to me, that's a really nice compliment, and it's very nice to hear from someone who actually likes something like that, because I, you know, I was so young, and I, I was very idealistic, and I, I thought a lot about acting, and I took it very seriously, and, but I think a picture like that was maybe a little bit too serious for me. Yeah, I uh, thought you did great, At though. the beginning of my career, you know, I... I didn't really know camera were very well. And I was a little bit too. Um, I was trying to imitate Kirk Douglas yeah. from the Young Man with a Horn, which is a movie he did with Lauren Bacall in the early '60s, I think. And I, I don't know. I was such a Kirk Douglas fan that I thought that I was going to do my Kirk there, you know. And yeah, yeah. And and you know, I I haven't seen it in many many years, and so. I could be wrong now because sometimes when I see these things um, much later on, I'm a little easier on myself yeah. than I was at the time. I just, it's funny you brought it up because I don't think I've seen that in 20 years. And Give it another chance. I, it's really good. Maybe, maybe I should, darn it. You know, yeah. maybe I will because I know when it came out, I was really embarrassed and I, I thought oh. it was a piece of crap. And, Oh, no, I thought it was great. And I wanted to ask you, like, uh, w was that you playing the saxophone or did they have yeah, like a... No, no, yes, it was. I, I uh, In the beginning, I did not know, obviously, I had never held one in my hand and I had no idea how to play it. But I got so kind of um, emotionally involved in it that, and to actually handle the instrument, you know, you become very familiar with it. Yeah, and you know how to take it out of the box, and you know how to put it together, and 
you know how to hold it, you know how to blow it, and you know you you learn little things along the way while you're faking it. When you start faking it, you start to learn how to do it for real at the same time. Yeah. And so toward the end of the film, I was actually playing it. Oh my god. Yeah, I got really into it, and I really got really very into it, and I I wanted to learn it, and you know the whole kind of mental uh, attachment that you get to something like that. Yeah. It really, it really, really affected me, and and Lynette, you know, she was so wonderful. Oh and, yeah, uh, Garrett was Morris sure. was in it too. Who's that? Garrett Morris was in it too. Oh my God, yes, he was. <laughs> Yeah, he was. God, I forgot about that. Yeah. I remember him looking through the keyhole in the door. Yeah, you know, see, it was, I, was, I was so young. Oh, my God. I must have been 20. I must have been 27 or 28 years old when I did that. Well, I, I don't know what happened to Lynette. Um, I think she became a weather girl in, in another yeah. state somewhere. And I think she was going out with uh, Baltazar Getty for a long time. I think they had a kid together. Oh my God! I don't know what ever happened to Lynette, but huh. oh, she was so wonderful. I have I a, in love with her. I have a feeling you're gonna watch uh, Almost Blue, and then after you watch it, you're gonna text me and be like, "Keith, I don't know why I watched it." Well, you know, I will take a look at it now. <laughs> I'm curious. Some I have a DVD of it, and um, I don't even know how to watch those anymore. Is there a player for that fucking thing? I I think DVD players are so hard to find now because everything's on streaming, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, if it, if I get a chance to see it again, I'll I'll watch it again because you recommended it. Ah, uh, and another one I recommend is Money for Nothing, which was awesome. Oh gosh, yeah, John Cusack. Yeah, I wanted to know, like, what was it like capturing John Cusack? Well, that's the story of Eddie Coyle, and it's a true story. Um, and the real Eddie Coyle, he hanged himself in his garage about two weeks before the movie came out because he was so embarrassed by it. He felt like the whole world was looking at him like he was a fool or something. Yeah. Yeah, because of what happened with the money. And um, I think he didn't... I thought that Disney treated the picture really respectfully the story i mean and i think he thought that the movie was going to make him look like a fool and so he killed himself but <laughs> so i don't think they didn't want anybody to know that that happened because they thought it was going to ruin the people's interest in the in the movie when it came out and so they kept it a big secret for a while yeah but uh but johnny cusack john did a good job i thought and uh Oh, John's the best. He's, he's my, no, I, I, besides I you, he's my favorite actor. No, we were cool together. I remember that was all in, uh, trying to remember where the hell we did it. Oh, that was in Philly. I think we shot it in Philly. In Philadelphia. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that was, a, wow. You're really going back there, aren't you? Well, yeah, because like, I like to try, because I'm sure you get asked a lot of, you know, Quentin Tarantino movie questions, and I like to yeah. ask, you know, movies that, you know, like, because there, there's more to Michael Madsen than that. You know what I mean? So I like to... You know something you write about that. Man. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I wanted to go into Free Willy, which I loved. And, I, and uh, you know, maybe that's just the kid in me. But growing up, I always wanted you to be my dad because I thought your character was so sweet. And so, like, it was totally different than, hey, I have a gun. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, it's funny you say that because I, I wish that I, I wanted to do more pictures like that, and I would have liked to have had more pictures like that available to me. But you know, um, when you do stuff like Reservoir Dogs, when you do stuff like um, Donnie Brasco, yeah, and you do those kind of things you really kind of put yourself in a box and people don't even consider you or think of you for anything different. And, and so I didn't realize it at the time, but I really shadow boxed myself by 
some of the villains I played, you know, even even the getaway. I mean, I did that right after right after Reservoir Dogs, but I, you know, I was going through my second marriage and and I I really I was trying to make a living. You know, I didn't yeah. I didn't have any I didn't have any understanding of the industry. I didn't have any understanding of um, representation or of I didn't have a publicist and I I didn't have anybody um, giving me advice about what to do or not to do as an actor and you know I was driving a tow truck in Chicago I, I wasn't really uh, I, I felt really out of place in Hollywood and I felt really confused about the whole thing I I I, I thought it was a great opportunity for me. And of course, I grew up watching Humphrey Bogart movies and and uh, Robert Mitchum movies. And I thought those guys were pretty cool. And, and I, I imagined myself being like that. But actually getting into motion pictures was something I never could have imagined that that would actually happen. Yeah. And so when I, when, when I started out, I, I did... A lot of stuff just as they came along, even the ones you mentioned, they just came out of nowhere. And I couldn't kind of understand the progressiveness of it, but I wanted to stay busy and um, I just wanted to keep going and I wanted to stay busy. And looking back, I guess, I wish that I would have slowed down a little bit. I wish I would have, I wish I would have got, um, I don't know. I feel like I've been in a big rush for a long time. Yeah. I feel like I've been in a big hurry. Like what's going to happen tomorrow kind of thinking. And I don't know why I, I, I could never get away from it when I was younger. I think I was so, um, I was so uh, confused. Like how it actually happened. Right. That I didn't think I deserved it or I didn't think that I, uh, I was surprised that I had found a way to do something with my life. And, and uh, I didn't know, quite know how to handle it. And I, like I say, I wish that I would have, I, I should have just slowed down a little bit because do you think was too much of a fucking hurry, man. Do you think maybe it was because in your mindset while you were making all, because you're working a lot, you know what I mean? And in your mindset, you're trying to find something that really means something to you. And maybe you were just working so much, you didn't have time to realize what connected to you, to the roles. Well, my, my, my father was a firefighter and my mother was, um, my mother had a college degree. Yeah. And uh, my mom was a very intellectual person and my mom was a very artistic person. And, you know, having the difference of my parents that widely the, the huge difference between the two of them, you know, I, I was stuck in the in the middle of a, a strange sort of um, understanding of things. I, I I was a criminal when I was a younger kid. I I, I mean I, I mean I was criminally um, aware. Let's say I, I for some reason I, I I got in trouble a lot, and I was always in one sort of trouble or another and I didn't do well in school and all my buddies were, you know, criminals and, uh. and just, just, you know, um, I mean like juvenile stuff, you know, stealing cars and yeah. Yeah. Stealing and, candy know, stuff, from the grocery store. Well, well, yeah. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. And, <laughs> and one, one thing leads to another, but I, 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 uh, I was, yeah, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do with myself. And I, I had been in jail a couple of times and I, I was desperately searching for something to do. And I was going to school to be, um, a paramedic. Wow. And there was a, there was a fella in my class who was an actor, my paramedics class. And he, he wanted me to go with him to an audition. Yeah, and I I kept saying no because I I thought it was really stupid and I I didn't understand you know why anybody would want to do that 
But at the same time, you know, I was watching all these old movies. And so I suppose that somewhere in the universe, there must have been some sort of strange connection in, in the way that these things happen. But I, I went to this thing with him and he obviously didn't get the part. But uh, when we were leaving, the people that were, he was there to see were from California. Mm -hmm. And they stopped me at the door and asked me why I hadn't read uh, like everybody else who was in there. And I explained to them that I wasn't there to do that and that I was just with my friend. But um, they, had gotten, they had got back in touch with me um, through my sister, Virginia, because she had an agent. She was doing singing telegrams and... Uh, high school theater stuff. Yeah. And they found me through her, through her agency somehow. And I got a silly part in, in a movie called War Games. With I'm Matthew very, Broderick, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a Matthew Broderick picture. I'm in the very opening scenes of the picture. I'm a soldier in a missile silo. And I can't, uh, my partner can't launch. You see, there's two guys in the in a uh, in a missile silo, yeah, and they have to both simultaneously turn a key to to send a nuclear missile, and they have to be right on timing with each other to do it, and that's how they really do it. And my partner in the in the thing was um, the fuck was his name? Ah, uh, God, John um, John Cusack. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> he was in the West Wing for years after that. Johnny Spencer. Oh, John Spencer, yeah. John Spencer was the other soldier in the missile silo. And he he gets nervous and he won't turn his key. And I have to threaten him with a forty-five. Well, it was a thirty-eight, but yeah. I, th I threaten him with a gun. And, uh, and then it cuts to the opening credits of the movie and the opening music and all that. And that's all I did. That's all it was. But I had to go to California to do it. And, you know, we shot at MGM studio and it was a big studio and it had the MGM lion up in the neon sign and it was stage 24, you know, and it was the real deal. It was a real studio movie. And yeah. I just couldn't believe that I was in it, but uh, that's what got me to California. That's what I, I left Chicago to go do that. And then I got a job. I got a job in Beverly Hills pumping gas and driving a tow truck at the Union Seventy Six, right in Beverly Hills. Until you got became really well known, right? No, no, no. I, I didn't. Nothing happened after that. Oh, I got the I got the job in the station even before I shot the movie. Oh yeah, because I wanted to get a job so I wouldn't have to go back to Chicago, and so I was already over there doing that. I don't think I ever even went to the premiere, but um, no, I, I worked there for almost a year and then I got an episode of Miami Vice and then I did uh, Cagney and Lacey. Yeah, that and, was a great uh, uh, Quantum Leap and uh, Tour of Duty and Jake and the Fat Man. And I started getting all these episodic TV villains. And so eventually I, I quit this, I quit pumping gas, and uh, that's sort of how everything sort of started. Yeah. And then I wanted to ask you about species, because uh, I, I actually, I, I think I'm one of those rare guys who I liked them both, and I know you only liked the first one. So Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, well, you I, see, what happened was, you see, what happened was I did... I did the getaway yeah. with Roger with Roger Donaldson, right? And the whole time we were doing it, I kept saying, Roger, you know, I would have rather have had the Alec Baldwin part. You see, I wanted to play Doc McCoy. Right. And I think I could have done it. To this day, I would say, I think I actually could have done that. Oh, I, 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 I agree. Except if you did that, you wouldn't have got to hook up with uh, Jennifer Tilly. Well, you see, it was a remake of a Steve McQueen picture at the beginning. <laughs> And, and, and I, I wanted to do that. And that's what I wanted to do. Uh. 
And so when I was making it, I kept telling Roger, you know, you got to get me, um, I got to be in something where I'm the hero. I want to play the hero and I, I don't want to keep doing these fucking bad guy movies. And so that's why he put me in Species. Because that was, that was Roger Donaldson from The Getaway, who directed yeah. that. And he gave me that fucking card because I had been begging him the whole time in The Getaway that I should have played the part. So he gave me the shot. He gave me the shot at the at being the hero and being the, the good guy. But then I got uh, second billing because Ben Kingsley... Ben Kingsley got title above me because he had an Academy Award. Oh, okay. So, you know, theatrically... It didn't really look like I was the lead of the film. Uh, well, maybe it said that on the titles, but when you watch it, you get a big sense that you are the lead of the film. Yeah, well, I mean, I felt that way. Yeah. I felt that way, too, but then when they did the second one, it was so horrible. I don't think nobody ever forgave me. Oh, well, so why why did you have a bad experience with the second one? Because I, I actually, thought it was a, I thought it was a terrible script. I, it was such a it was just terrible script. It was yeah. just a terrible, undoable material. It was so stupid. The whole astronaut thing. I don't know. I just thought it was so weak. Yeah. And Peter Peter Medic was the director. And I love Peter, but he's not a sci fi director and. I didn't think he was the right choice to direct it. Yeah. Well, so maybe I liked it because I already liked your character from the first one because you were like such a, you know, you were the guy we're rooting for that the second one, it was just like, oh, it was cool. And then when you watch the third one, you're not in the third one. You're like, all right, I just need to watch the first two. <laughs> no, I never, no, they couldn't have talked me into the third one. <laughs> I, I would have rather chopped my arm off to do that, but. But they, it was so horrible. But, yeah. but I, but see, that's the kind of thing that I, I should have been able to keep doing stuff like that. I should have, I should have stuck to that sort of thing. I, I should have held out more for that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I went through, I went through three marriages and I had six children. And, you know, my personal life, meantime, all these movies were going on, you know, you get yourself in a situation where you want to take care of your family. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. You want to give everybody a certain lifestyle and a lifestyle that I certainly never had growing up. And, and one thing leads to another and, you know, movie acting becomes like a normal job. There's nothing glamorous about it anymore. It's no different than being a bricklayer or, or a garbage man. It's uh it's your job. You get up in the morning and you go and you do it and you go home and you hope for the best. And uh, I, I did a lot of pictures that I shouldn't have done because I was maintaining a lifestyle for my family. Yeah. And, you know, along the way, I got very, very lucky because a few of them turned out to be very good. And uh, I've always been blessed like that. I've always felt like somebody up there likes me or perhaps it was my destiny to begin with. I, I, I don't know. I've been very, uh, I'm always, I mean, I'm getting very, uh, what's the word? I'm getting very uh, nostalgic lately, like the last couple of years. I got very melancholy about a lot of things. And, well, I don't and, think, um, I don't think anyone makes a movie to purposely have it be bad or whatever. No, no, no. Of course you not. Know what I mean? Oh, God, no. Yeah. No, I never did that. I mean, I never did that. Yeah. I mean, I did everything I did, I thought and hoped the best for it. But yeah. I'm saying there's a certain point where you don't have control. I mean, you know, it depends on the director. It depends on the material. It depends on how they shoot it. It depends on how they release it. It depends on who else is in it with you. Yeah. And there's so many things that are not in your control. And, uh, you, know, you can't always have the last say in these fucking things. And a lot of times you think the best for something, but it doesn't turn out that way. Huh. And then, you know, people say, wow, why was he in that fucking thing? You know, or I saw Matson in this piece of crap. Oh, God, you know, why would he do that? Like man with and, a gun. 
and, and exactly. And then people blame Which I loved. Yeah. No, listen, you're the first person who's ever said that to me. Uh, you also so, did one with Christy Swanson, which is like in the same field. Of, and they were, I thought that oh, was yeah, great, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. What the hell was the name of that fucking thing? I don't remember, but I, I loved it because <laughs> uh, I Christy's a friend of mine. So I watched it and I liked it. I, I thought she was very good in that. She's a very sexy gal. And um, God, I, that was, you know, who else was in that was uh, Ron Perlman. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was like the guy who hired you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it's one of those times where that was during the time when I should have slowed down. Yeah. I should have really taken more time and look at that material that I was getting. And I was, but you know what? I was young and I was just uh, ambitious. I, I wanted to stay busy and I wanted to make a living. And I went through a lot of different agencies. And, but you know, the studio system collapsed and independent films took over. And then I became that guy because I did Reservoir Dogs. And so, all of a sudden, I became the darling for independent filmmakers. Yeah. And then when you do that, you really don't know what you're getting into sometimes. And and uh, everybody wants you for the wrong reason. And right. uh, But, you know, I looked out again with Quentin because we did Kill Bill. And then uh, we did... Um, the Hateful Eight. The Hateful Eight, yeah. So, huh. And he's getting ready to do something else again soon, and and I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed for that. Oh, I'm but sure I, I, I'm sure he's I mean, going to help you with that. Yeah. No, no. Listen, part of the reason I did your show is because I wanted to say that just in the last two years, I completely put my whole career back together. Yeah. I got I got three pictures that are done now that haven't come out yet. And I'm really looking forward to them, and I don't mind talking about them. Um. I uh, I did this thing. Let me see what's here. I'm trying to tell you about these things. All right. I did a civil I did a Civil War picture that should be coming out. It's doing all the uh, it's doing all the um, film it, festival yeah. rounds yeah. now. It's called uh -huh. Resurrection Resurrection Road, and it's a Civil War picture, and uh, but it's a sci-fi Civil War picture. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really into that. Yeah. I'm thinking that's going to be pretty, pretty good. It's going to be cool. Are you like sci-fi U.S. Grant or something? Um, yeah, you know, the, <laughs> the president. No, yeah. it's, it's directed by directed by a guy named Ashley Cahill. Um, there's a guy named Malcolm Malcolm Goodwin is the lead. Yeah. And um, I'm the evil Quantrell plantation owner. And uh, we shot it in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, nice. And I think it's going to be damn good. I'm really looking forward to it. It takes place in 1863. Yeah. It's about a squad of black soldiers, and it's read by the, led by the Malcolm character. And, and uh, I did a thing in Texas called Blood Behind Us. Oh, that sounds cool. The father son story. I'm an ex Hells Angel, and. My son comes to me to uh, help him get out of some trouble that he's in. And uh, that'll be out by Christmas time, I hope. Oh, yeah. And I'm about to start this thing um, that's, uh, I can get the title right. It's Is called it? Cookbook. It's called The Cookbook for American, The Cookbook for Southern Housewives. Oh, nice. I was going to yeah, guess yeah. something completely different. <laughs> no. No, was, it's a, what were you going to guess? I was going to guess Species 9. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put it past me if somebody came along with it. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's directed by it's directed by a girl named Josie Hill. She's the director, writer, and producer of it. And um, it's a true story from 1964 yeah. about some mafia guys in Louisiana. And... Um, it's uh, you know, I'll I'll, t I'll text you some of the production cool. information so you can put it on your website. Please do. I would love to do that. I would love to help it. 
I, I, I had uh, three more questions. I wanted to ask you about Sin City and how yeah. come how come you weren't in Sin City too? Because I thought they recasted you with someone terrible. You know what I mean? Well, you know, Sin City Two was made by a completely and totally different production company from Sin City One. Yeah, and I had met Robert Rodriguez. I actually met Robert Rodriguez at a a premiere party for Kill Bill, and I said, "Hey, man, you know, I read your script." And I said, "Why, why in the hell am I not in it?" And he goes, "Oh, Michael, you know, well, who would you want to play?" And I said, "Well, I want to play Marv." Yeah. And that's the first time I ever heard of, he said, well, I have Mickey Rourke is going to do Marv. And I thought, wow, okay, of course, you know, that's, that's a logical idea. And that's a great idea. But I said, you know what, uh, what the, you know, isn't there anybody else in the fucking thing? And he said, well, you know, what about Bob? And I said, oh man, well, listen, Robert, you know, I'd love to work with you and, and I, I'd love to be around Mickey. And I said, uh, Sure, if Bob is what you want me to do, then I'll do it. Yeah. And so that's why I did it. And it turned out to be so much better than I thought. I had a lot more to do than I thought I would have had. And, you know, shooting a picture like that is a it very was, bizarre experience. I mean, it was cool, too, because it was like yeah, it was comic great. booky. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. a very bizarre thing to shoot that stuff. I mean, you're sitting on an Apple box with a steering wheel in your hand. And then yeah. you go see the movie and you're actually in a car driving. Yeah. You know, I don't know how in the fuck they do it. I don't really know how they do it. It's pretty amazing, uh, you know, how they put it together. But I think it's a tremendously, uh, I loved uh, doing that. And I would have done the second one, but it was a completely different production company. And I don't think they, I don't know, I think they forgot about me. Yeah, they, they, they shouldn't have done that, and I'm going to leave that at that because I thought you were great as Bob. No, you know, you're very complimentary, and I, I appreciate it. You know, you're a young guy, and I looked at all the folks you had on your show, and I thought I'd love to be on it and maybe get a chance to talk about some stuff I have coming and let everybody know I haven't dropped that. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. And that, that, so then my two last questions is, uh, you did a movie called Every Last One of Them, uh, with, uh, which I loved because uh, Jake Weber's in it, you're in it, Richard Dreyfuss is in it, Taron Manning in it. And I just wanted to know, what was that experience like? Because, you know, that was, that must have been pretty cool because all these guys are like really, you know what I mean, bringing the same type of stuff, you know? I, 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 uh, I had a good time with that. It was more, there's more a chance of me, uh, you know, I love being the anti-hero. I mean, yeah. I, I think I was born to do anti-hero pictures. And, you know, stuff like The Professionals or something like Cool Hand Luke or or something like The Dirty Dozen or, uh, you know, I just, I, I'm, I live and breathe that kind of stuff. And they just don't make pictures like that, you know, not lately. No, and they haven't, lately. they haven't for a long time now. And I'm thinking that maybe when I show up again, a few of these things come out. I think I might have a second shot at uh, to get my name out there a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be there to support you all the way. I'll go to the premieres. I'll be like, yeah, Michael Madsen, yeah. You know? <laughs> I think my sons would appreciate that. Yeah. I was supposed to get a star. I was supposed to get a star on the sidewalk. One of these days, it's been oh. promised to me a couple of times, but it it never happened yet, and I sure would appreciate that. Oh. I think it'd be one of one of those things, you know, that I I I used to. Um, it was one of the first times I went down Hollywood Boulevard. I was on a bus, and I got off the bus in front of the Chinese Theater, and I was walking around looking at the stars in the sidewalk, and I I had a black sharpie in my jacket pocket. And I went, I crouched down and over a blank one and I wrote my name on it. And it was right after I got the job at the gas station. And, ah. and, I, and I remember thinking that someday I might be on the sidewalk. So keep your fingers crossed for me there, Keith. No, it'll, it'll definitely happen. And, uh, you know, if I ever become rich and famous, I will, I will buy a star for you. I'll be like this, this, 
<laughs> all right, all right, you know, because you got to you got to help your friends out. You know what I mean? That's what I'll do. They're kind of expensive. Oh well, hey, I'm I got I'm so I'm so loaded with money, Michael, because I'm rich and it's, you know. It's scary. It's scary to think that you can buy the the damn things, but um, <laughs> I think it's sort of like that. I think you have to have a sponsor, and I think uh, I don't think it's that simple. But, All right. but I do know that I do know that they're expensive. So, well, to put, it, put, it, to put it that way. We'll get it done. I, I promise you that. And my last question for you, Michael, is if you could go into a time machine and talk to a younger version of yourself, it could be from yesterday or last year or when you were a kid or whatever, and tell yourself what you know now, what would you tell your younger version of yourself? I think I'd go back to the set of Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. And I'd say, Michael... You're doing something right now that you don't understand and don't realize is going to go into the history of motion pictures. And you need to take a deep breath. You need to uh, stop and think about how lucky you are. And you need to slow down some. And uh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's good advice. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. So, Michael, oh, yeah, where, yeah. Where, where can the f folks at home follow and support you? You got social media, Instagram, Twitter, something like that? Oh, I'll have Johnny text you everything. Okay, cool. We'll put it in the notes. All right, Michael, have Keith, a good day, buddy. Keith, Keith, thank you so much for having me. Of course. We'll talk again. Okay. All okay. right. All right, guys. That was the episode with Michael Madsen. Subscribe, rate, <laughs> review, and we'll see you guys next week on Razor Rips.